12, Coach A. June 28, 2018. The wild boars are resting in chamber nine when they hear a sudden gurgling swoosh. Coach A quickly flicks on the flashlight and shines it into the darkness. Water is rushing up toward them. Behind them is a very steep slope of rock and gravel that rises about 30 feet, nine meters, into a formation called an Avon, a high vertical chamber that doesn't reach the surface. The boys clamber up this slope as quickly as they can. In less than an hour, the water surges almost nine feet or three meters. How far will the flood rise? Will it continue etching closer? Thankfully, it stops before it reaches the boys. But now they are trapped at the top of this gravelly hill on a relatively flat space the size of a small bedroom. The hill butts up against the cave wall on one side. Below, water curls around them, flowing past like a river. Before, it had seemed as though the water blocking their way had flowed toward them out of Sam Yak. But now the current is moving in the opposite direction, gushing from somewhere out of the depths of Tam Luang. What they don't realize is that the water that trapped them to begin with had flowed in from Monk series. But now, with all the rain that had been pummeling the mountain outside, the cave has begun to flood from the main passage as well. The wild boars are doubly trapped. Even in their perilous state, the boys hold on to hope. They make plans for what they will do after they are rescued. They make a solemn promise. When they get out of the cave, they will look after one another forever. They will never go anywhere without telling the others where they are. One thing that keeps the boys from sinking into despair is thinking about their families, the faces of their mothers, father, grandparents, siblings, and friends fill their minds, both in dreams and wakefulness. It brings them comfort to imagine future moments with the people they love. Coach Egg has few loved ones left alive to dream of. Most of the people he loves are here in the cave with him. Egg was born across the border in the hills of Myanmar in the Shan region. When he was only nine years old, he lost both parents and his brother in one sudden rush of illness, leaving him in the care of his grandmother. Migrant children face tough odds in Thailand. It's estimated that half do not enroll in school and only one quarter are accessing medical care. When migrant children lose their parents, their struggles only increase. Unless another family member is able to take care of them, children can end up homeless and living on the streets where they are vulnerable to being kidnapped, abused, or becoming addicted to drugs. Luckily, Ig did not end up on the streets. At the age of nine, his grandmother sent him to a temple in Lampun, a town south of Masai, where he went through the ceremony to become a Nain, or novice monk. This is a common experience for Thai boys, but Ig lived as a Nain for a much longer time than most, almost 11 years. Being a young monk is not without its challenges. Monks rise before the sun at around 4 a.m. They take their morning walk to meet with villagers and receive food from them. Back at the temple, they eat and pray. They may eat another small, light meal at noon, but after that, they practice spiritual fasting and eat nothing until sunrise the next day. The purpose of fasting in the evening is to practice discipline and allow the monks to focus on their studies and meditation. That's the idea anyway. But for a new monk in training, life at the temple is hard to get used to. Sitting in meditation is uncomfortable. Your back aches, your empty belly rumbles, your mind churns with thoughts of food or your bed back at home. How are you supposed to keep doing this? It seems impossible. But then you make it through that first day, and then another day, and then a week. You realize that both your body and your mind are stronger than you thought. Once you have conquered one challenge, you begin to wonder, what else have you told yourself is impossible? What else is there that you believed you could not overcome? Maybe the idea of impossible is only in your mind. Thailand Stateless People. Coach Egg and three other members of the Wild Boars team are stateless, meaning they do not have official Thai citizenship and legally belong to no country. It is difficult to get an accurate count of the number of stateless people living in the shadows in Thailand, but it could be as many as 3.5 million, many of them children. For centuries, Southeast Asia has been a place of migrations, both large and small. Many of those who crossed the border into Thailand from Myanmar Laos, and China come seeking work and better opportunities. For some, their futures are so bleak in their home countries that staying to work in Thailand without official permission is worth the risk of being arrested or deported. Others cross into Thailand daily, 
working on one side of the border and sleeping on the other. Violence and persecution also drive migrants into Thailand. In the Shan region of Myanmar, where Coach A was born, armed conflict has pushed civilians across the border seeking safety. Other groups, such as the Rohingya of Myanmar, have fled their ancestral land because they are persecuted and murdered by their own government. These refugees have nowhere else to go, and their fate depends on whether neighboring countries will show compassion toward them. As of 2018, Thailand refused to recognize the Rohingya as refugees and either imprisoned them or sent them back to Myanmar, where they face continued violence and even death. Stateless people in Thailand are supposed to be allowed to go to school and get medical care. But without government documents, they can't attend college, apply for higher paying jobs, vote, buy land, or travel outside of the country. Even children born on Thai soil can end up stateless if their parents do not fill out the proper paperwork to get them a birth certificate. Sometimes parents are too afraid to register their Thai born children because they are stateless themselves and they fear the authorities. In this way, the cycle of statelessness continues. Thailand has pledged to reduce the number of stateless people by clearing the barriers to their citizenship. But racism, discrimination, and a lack of political will have slowed the reform process. In the meantime, stateless children in Thailand continue to be among the most vulnerable to poverty, disease, and human trafficking. Some people, such as wild boar team member Adun, managed to thrive despite the many obstacles stacked against them. Faced with violence and few prospects for the future, Adun's parents secretly smuggled him from Myanmar across the border into Maasai when he was only six years old. He has been in the care of his church ever since and goes to a nearby school. Adun's principal has called him the best of the best and says that stateless children have a fighting spirit that makes them want to excel. Coach Aik certainly possesses that same fighting spirit. Without it, he would have never survived the hardships his own country has burdened him with. When he was 20 years old, A left Lampoon and moved to Maasai. He spent almost all his time volunteering at Wat Doi Wao, a serene temple perched high on a hill overlooking the border into Myanmar. He impressed the senior monk there, who noticed that the quiet young man seemed to work particularly well with children. He was patient and kind with them and loved to play games. Children trusted him and listened to him when they wouldn't listen to anyone else. Even though Aik wasn't a monk anymore, he preferred to stay at the temple. He never got into trouble. He didn't go out late, drink alcohol, smoke, or bother anyone. Even when he would take trips outside of Maasai, it was almost always to visit temples in neighboring towns. For Aik, a temple was a safe place. It was home. Though Aik always struck people as friendly and cheerful, he also possessed the gentle wisdom of someone who has suffered deeply. He seemed destined to become a full monk one day, and everyone knew he would be a great one. Aside from his Buddhist faith, there was one thing that Coach Egg held above all others, soccer. Egg's father had loved the beautiful game with his whole heart, and he passed that passion down to his son. In those lonely, aching days after Egg lost his family to illness, he comforted himself by dreaming that someday he would lead a soccer team of his own. When the head coach of the Wild Boars hired him as an assistant, it was like a dream coming true. In the years that Egg had been with the team, he has gradually strengthened the players on and off the field by teaching them what he learned as a monk. And now that they are trapped in the cave, his pregame meditations have turned out to be vital training, not just for the boys, but for Coach Aik himself. He has led his little brothers through tough moments before. He reminds them how strong they are. After all, this is the group who bikes up mountains and swims in rivers, the group who gets all the way to the end of a cave with no fear. They are stronger than they even realize. Sadly, Aik knows from his personal experience just how strong children can be. And so, as hard as it is to ask the boys to endure another night in the cave, and then another, and another, he knows they have it in them. Keep fighting, he tells them. People are looking for us. They will find us. Keep fighting. Buddhism in Thailand. About 488 million people call themselves Buddhists today, and most live in Asia. Buddhists follow the teaching of a man named Siddhartha Gautama, who was born more than 2,500 years ago in India. He became the Buddha when he reached enlightenment or a deep understanding of life and the universe. He passed that understanding on through his teachings, which show people how to live good lives. While all Buddhists follow the Buddha's teachings, each country and culture practices the religion in its own way. For most Thai Buddhists, temples and the monks who live in them are at the center of religious and everyday life. 
People visit their local temple to make merit, a term that includes making offerings, giving donations, and doing good work. People go to the temple for religious ceremonies, festivals, funerals, or just to stop by and visit with the monks when they need advice or prayer. Until about 100 years ago, when Thailand developed public schools, temples were also the primary places for children to get an education. It is very common for boys and men in Thailand to spend time as a name or a novice monk. Some Thais believe that a boy cannot reach manhood without serving as a name for at least a short time. Boys as young as nine years old may go to the temple in the summer for a few weeks or even months at a time. In the name ceremony, the boy's head is shaved and then washed with a blessing. Long hair was once a sign of status and wealth. Monks shave their head to symbolize that they are leaving their old lives behind. The young novice is given sunset colored robes to wear. These robes are so long and complicated that just getting dressed in the morning is often the young monk's first challenge. Thai monks take an oath to not own possessions or handle money. They are not allowed to buy food for themselves or cook their own meals. They depend completely on their community to provide for them. In early morning, the monks walk barefoot into their village. Local people come out to greet them, also barefoot as a sign of respect, and scoop the food that they have cooked that morning into the monks' bowls. A village cares for its monks and its temples, and the temples, in turn, care for anyone who needs help.